this passage to production. Now, full disclosure, we didn't get re rejected from KubeCon. We're going to do the next chapter of this talk at KubeCon on Wednesday, so this will be continued. But we're some pinch hitters, I think, for someone who dropped out, so here we are. Uh, meet Hero. Hero is application source code on a developer's laptop. Hero longs to be a real application running in production, serving end users. And today, right now, we're going to help Hero live their dream. Um, we're going to help Hero navigate hundreds of CNCF projects, maybe not all of them right now, and <laughs> choose the ones that, for the, that we are interested in learning more about, integrate them with each other, and get Hero running in production. <coughs> I I'm Whitney, this is Victor, and together we host a show on Victor's DevOps Toolkit YouTube channel. Our show is called You Choose, and in every episode, we help the community make a system design choice. So we gather all the relevant technology for that choice. We invite experts on to present about each technology. They only get five minutes to present, and at the end of the episode, we um, call for votes in whichever technology the community votes for is what we implement in our ongoing in our in our ongoing demo so for example our application source code needs to be a container image we presented about these texts the community chose cloud native build packs and then we leveled up into a container image once a container image we needed to be in a registry. We had these to choose from. Community chose Harbor, and then we implemented Harbor in our demo. And that brings us to today, right now. Get your phones out, scan this QR code. We are in a basement, so when we um, practice this, it may take a while for it to come up. Worst case scenarios, we'll do a show of hands. But get this QR code, and we're going to make system design choices today <coughs> and build a live demo today based on what you choose. So we're going to provision a production cluster, we're going to configure synchronization with GitOps, we're going to implement Ingress, and we're going to define and deploy our application. So let's do this. Let's help our hero live in production. Look how happy they are. Aha. So we're gonna, first we're going to provision a production cluster. Our choices are, oh man, I'm having trouble with this clicker. OK. Our choices are cross-plane and uh, CAPI, uh, cluster API. So first, why do we even need a technology to help us provision the cluster? Um, well, no matter where you deploy to, whether it's the cloud or whether it's on-prem, no matter what bootstrapping tool you use, it is complex. We have to worry about node sizes, subnets, VPCs, cluster authorization, node groups, roles, come on, policies, security groups, gateways, root tables, it goes on and on. So no matter which choose, tool you choose here, it's never not complex. So then we need a tool to help us manage the complexity, <laughs> and what else are we looking for exactly? So what we need is definitely we want to define our clusters declaratively, and more specifically, we want to define them using Kubernetes resources. So then we have the benefit of the Kubernetes API that's always making sure our desired state is in sync with our actual state. It also has the benefit of you can use any other tool in the Kubernetes ecosystem, like, you know, a GitOps tool. Spoiler alert. Uh, so first off, we have Cluster API. Cluster API is a focused tool. It does a great job. You define what you want your cluster to look like with Cluster API resources, and there are providers. It's, it's going to provision that cluster for you, and also you can manage the cluster lifecycle. It, um, it works with all the major bootstrapping tools, all the major cloud providers. It's excellent. Then we have Crossplane. With Crossplane, you can take any API on the planets and pull it in and interact with it via the Kubernetes API. So that um, can do some really cool things with that. For one thing, with Crossplane, you can, well, you provision clusters with it, obviously, is one thing, but you can provision all sorts of things. And then you can present it behind a simplified interface. So you can offer a really simple API that does some complex stuff in the back. And then uh, with Crossplane, you can also make compositions of resources. So you can provision not only a cluster, but that cluster has a database, and it's already running Knative, and it's all together hidden behind one simplified API for, say, developers to use. So those are our choices. Crossplane, it's great, but there's a lot of complexity to deal with. And a cluster API, which is also great and much more straightforward for our purposes. 
And so let's see how well our voting works. And if it doesn't work, we'll do a show of hands. I love how you haven't said a word this whole time. I'm wondering, what <laughs> what am talking. I doing here? I, I'm, I'm unsure. Kind of like, why am I here? And by the way, your choice is going to get me fired. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I see. That's the design. Okay. All right. Well, if anybody's hiring, <laughs> I'm available after this session. <laughs> All right, the people have spoken, Victor. Cluster okay. API. Let's see an implement. Cluster API. Um. <laughs> Can I reject? No? <laughs> okay, Cluster API, right? So um, here's a manifest of Cluster API. I'm using AWS today, so um, it would be AWS CKS, right? And that's this because is... that's what you voted for in a past episode of You Choose. Yeah. Yes. So uh, cluster API, usually use CLI to generate this manifest, contains the information about the cluster uh, and a few other things. I have no enough time because Whitney talks too much. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go and say apply it, right? Apply dash dash file name, uh, copy AWSCKS, right? Now I cheated a bit. This is the only thing that I did in advance. I did both of them simply because it takes 20 something minutes to create stuff in AWS. Blame them, not me. Uh, so this was already done, execute the same command, I got cluster API, I knew what you're going to vote, um, <laughs> and if I do kubectl blah blah blah, you can see copy resources over here, cluster is provisioned, uh, machine pool is provisioned, everything is up and running, my cluster is up and running, it took 25 minutes, give or take. Now, to prove that that's really working, I'm going to uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, copy get uh, cube config dot aw. This is a simple script that um, uh, retrieves the credentials for aw for EKS from copy, and uh, I'm going to export those credentials. Uh, upa, exp exp uh, export cube uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. cube uh, config equals pwd cube. I'm all cool, and uh, kubectl get nodes. I should have two or three nodes, one node in my cluster. Uh, no, 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 wrong kubeconfig, prod. <laughs> two nodes in a cluster, oh, excellent, <laughs> right? Um, and I'm going to kubectl create a namespace production uh, just to be ready for whatever is coming next. All right. Let's go. Give me my slides back, please. Uh, I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm depressed now after people <laughs> uh, Aha. Next up, we're going to configure synchronization with GitOps. Our choices are Argo CD, we have Flux, and Carvel Cap Controller. But first of all, what is GitOps? So there's four principles of GitOps. First, you have to define your resources declaratively. Second, they need to be versioned and immutable. And that's almost always done with Git. Third, our software agent needs to continuously be pulling from that repo and applying, having the freshest changes possible. And finally, it should always be reconciling uh, desired state with actual state. And that is GitOps. And our GitOps tools are Argo CD. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, we're like way off That's in the That's the speed with now. which you should speak, otherwise we'll <laughs> never finish. There we go. Our tools uh, are Argo CD, okay, Carvel Cap, which is, uh, has a great UI. We have Flux. <laughs> Flux integrates tightly with Helm and with customized treats them as first class, class citizens. And we have Carvel Cap Controller, which you don't have to give um, root access to your whole GitOps tool. Also, it integrates well with the other um, Carvel suite of tools. And with that, vote please, if assuming, there we go, vote please. Oh, this one, we've, this can be pretty exciting. Again, this is not a popularity contest. This is not a winning it thing. Is. This is just it what is. you want to learn more absolutely about. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the previous one was not the popularity contest. This one is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Flux? Uh, looks like Flux. I don't think it's going to change. OK. Interesting. Flux cool. it is. Let's flux do Flux. Let's see it. OK. Uh, so 
since I don't have enough time, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping today's setup, you know, Helm install and stuff like that, because that's, uh, frankly, uh, uh, I don't know, boring. So I'm going to just execute uh, GitOps um, flux sh. This, uh, this will execute Helm install and the stuff that uh, is required to, oh, GitHub user is this, uh, DevOps paradox. Uh, okay, I set up flux. You haven't seen it, trust me, it's just Helm install and uh, you need to give it credentials to your GitHub account because it uh, creates a repository, does stuff and so on and so forth. So let's install, um, let's install it now for real, bootstrap actually, bootstrap, uh, strap. Actually, I, I never use this terminal. I don't know how to do code complete. Uh, flag bootstrap uh, GitHub um, and then uh, owner, uh, owner is uh, DevOps Paradox. That's one of my GitHub users, repository. If I make a typo, uh, uh, tell me, uh, that would be CNCF demo. And what else do I need? Branch is main and uh, the path, should be infra. That's where I'm going to store uh, my stuff and it's going to be my personal account. And frankly, if this works, I will be surprised. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Stay away, there's still transit to fail. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, gonna tell you a joke while we're waiting. Why did the man fall into the well? Because he couldn't see that well. Too late. <laughs> okay. Uh, I bootstrapped uh, repository, meaning that all everything required for, uh, for Flux to manage uh, stuff in that repo is over there. I'm going to pull the changes. Those are the changes that Flux CLI itself pushed. So I'm going to install a couple of things, right? Uh, first of all, I have here the directory schema hero that contains manifest for schema hero. Database schema uh, stuff, uh, nothing really important. I mean, we might use it later. But what does matter is that uh, I'm going to copy uh, flux uh, schema hero YAML into the infra directory. That's the directory that flux is watching. And um, actually, I didn't show you the file, Flux Schema Hero. This is Flux way to define and say, okay, uh, use the default repository, the repository that was boosted before, look at the path for Schema Hero and apply whatever is defined there, right? That's the one that I copied to the infra directory and uh, there's gonna be another one. Uh, Flux, uh, what, what am I, Cert Manager, right? I will need Cert Manager for later. Again, same, similar thing, except that this time files are not coming from my repository. They're coming from the Helm registry, Jetstack, and over here I'm specifying which Helm I want to run to run my Cert Manager, right? Uh, and I'm going to copy that one as well. Uh, Flux uh, Cert Manager into Infra Directory and I'm going to add stuff, and I'm going to commit stuff, something, and I'm going to push it um, to the git directory, uh, to the git repository, right? Now if I do uh, kubectl dash dash namespace uh, flux system, I believe, and I want to get uh, git uh, repositories, and what else? Uh, Helm repositories, Helm repositories, okay, and uh, Helm releases. All those should be now synchronized or it will be running. One is unknown, soon it will work, maybe it will not, we'll find out. Um, and uh, if everything works, if I do dash dash ctl, uh, namespace, schema hero, there we go, get all, schema hero should be running. There we go, Ta -ta it's running, and uh, kubectl dash dash namespace cert manager, right? Get all, cert manager should be running behind me. There we go. Ta -da -da. Uh, uh, and that's about it, I think. I'm going to export here GitOps uh, app, uh, going to be Flux, because that's what you chose for later. Go with me. Oh, here we go, slides. 
Awesome, cool. So we have our production cluster made. We have GitOps installed. Now we need to think about ingress. So as things stand, oh, we have uh, ingress into next, contour, and emissary ingress are our choices right now. So at, why do we need ingress at all? So as things stand, once our application is running in the cluster, the end users can't get to it. So we need to add ingress to get defined rules about how traffic from outside of the cluster is allowed to come into the cluster. And it can do a whole bunch of advanced stuff too. But in the end, we want our users to access our application safely and with minimum downtime. So, there we are. The saying that our ingress objects can do all this advanced stuff, it's not quite right. The Kubernetes native ingress object is actually kind of limited in functionality in a few ways, but the one I'm going to dig into now is that it uses annotations to add these functionality. Gateway API fixes a lot of that. We'll get to that. If, but um, <laughs> If only the previous talk mentioned how we could improve. I ingress. know, right? If only the person right before us talked a lot <laughs> about great, how great it is. So adding this functionality with annotations isn't great. Annotations unstructured data. There's no um, standardization about how that works. And then we have uh, projects making their own CRDs about how to, uh, traffic will come in before Gateway API. They're all def choosing different ways to, imp to be able to control all this advanced functionality. They all, there's lots of different networking layers, and then uh, some people still are using the native Kubernetes object and doing it with the annotations, or both. It's, it's a mess to navigate. So we have our Gateway AI. Uh, implementation, and that helps things considerably. So if you weren't here for the last talk, Gateway API is a collection of resources in Kubernetes that models the way service networking should be done in Kubernetes. So let's get into it. Ingress Nginx is maintained by the Kubernetes project. It does add that additional functionality with the native Kubernetes object. It doesn't support Gateway API yet, I don't think. Does it? No. OK, I'm looking. <laughs> Soon, okay, it's working on it. And, um, and then, as implied in the name, it uses Nginx as the networking layer. So an ingress is going to provide a human readable way for you to configure what you want your, your ingress to look like, how you want traffic to come to the cluster, and then it outputs uh, configuration for your data plane. And then the data plane, like Nginx in this case, is what's doing the actual work of routing the requests. Next up, we have Contour. Contour um, uses Envoy for the data plane. It is a gateway API implementation, and it uses its own custom resource called HTTP proxy. Some of the ingress object problems that are solved is you can see status now for when things go wrong. It's much easier to debug. And what else? It separates concerns between different personas. Developers care about much different things than operators do. And then, again, as, as Nick talked about in great detail in the last talk, you can reference mm -hmm. secrets and other namespaces with the reference grant. And then we have Emissary Ingress, which also uses Envoy as the data plane. And Envoy, instead of having one, has a collection of smaller um, custom resources. It has a mapping, which is developer facing. It has a host, where you decide the host name. And it has a listener, where you say where you want to listen and what port you want to uh, listen on. And so those are our choices. And uh, spoiler alert, these all support the native Kubernetes ingress object, and Victor's going to implement the native Kubernetes <laughs> ingress object, no matter which one you choose. Um, and there we go. Ingress Nginx. OK. We can get a little, ooh, okay. contour. OK. Oh. Contour. Woo. Excellent. You will not get fired. <laughs> wait, wait. Um, no, no. We gotta, they can still vote right now. They're going to uh, be... They can vote, but yeah, okay. who cares? <laughs> who cares? Um, okay. So uh, here we are. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, copy Flux uh, contour, con contour YAML right, to the infra directory. That's where Flux is watching for stuff. And I'm going to add that, and I'm going to commit that, something, and I'm going to push that. Cool. Um, now, what I just pushed there is this, right? Uh, contour YAML. Uh, basically, again, similar thing like with Cert Manager. This is the registry with Helm chart. That's the Helm chart itself. Uh, I'm too lazy to put any values because the default is always so correct. Um, <laughs> And Flux will uh, synchronize it with the cluster, right? 
And if everything worked fine, uh, there's namespace uh, project contour not there yet. It should start working. Get NS, let's say, project contour, not yet. Did I mess it up? Git status, it's fine. Uh, infra, did I copy it? I did. Am I impatient? Probably. Hey, there we go. Woo! Namespace, project, contour, get all, it's over there, up and running, right. Now we have a slight problem, and that problem is that uh, AWS does not like IPs, it likes domain, and you need an IP for, um, uh, for what do I need it for? Uh, to use it with Nipayo, because I'm too cheap to get the real domain. Uh, <laughs> host name, name, I'm going to store it here for later, and I will need to do uh, export ingress IP equals, uh, pa -pa -pa how I'm going to do this, uh, dig, uh, that's short, and uh, ingress uh, host name, right? This should ah. give me the IP and uh, echo, echo ingress IP. I need the IP of the service, load bound service. It will take a while, it will take two minutes. So let's jump to the next one and then uh, I'll get back when, uh, when uh, AWS wakes up. <laughs> Will you give me my slides back, please? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> the last thing we need to you do. You know it. You don't is, need slides. <laughs> is come up with some uh, configuration for our define and deploy our application. So there are lots <laughs> of different configuration tools to use. We have customize, we have Helm, we have Carvel YTT, and CD Kates. So why do we need a tool to help us with configuration anyway? What's a little YAML? Can't we all just write that? Uh, so <laughs> we have to worry about container images and updating them. We have to worry about application-specific configuration. We have to worry about how it I integrates with the underlying infrastructure and then how we're going probably some Kubernetes objects in there. And by the end, and, and especially since we're deploying across different environments, it's a lot to deal with. So first we have Customize to help us out with that. Customize is natively built into kubectl with the apply-k command. It uses a patching strategy to update, uh, update application configuration. So you have a common base configuration, and then you make patches for what things you want to change between deploys. And then those patches get overlaid onto a common base when you actually deploy. And that's Customize. Uh, Helm uses a templating strategy to do this. So for changes between deploys, it's going to template, it's going to factor things that are likely to change out into a values.yaml file. And then you can also add dynamic configuration with Go templating. Carvel YTT, the YTT stands for YAML Templating Tool. It can do the patching strategy of Customize, and it can do the templating strategy of Helm. And then it adds the dynamic configuration with a Pythonic language called Starlark that gets added into the YAML comments. So it's always YAML, and it can always be processed and validated as such. And then finally, we have CD Kate. The CD Kate stands for a Cloud Development Kit for Kubernetes. So with this, you can write configuration in any language you want, as long as that language is TypeScript, JavaScript, Java, Python, or Go. <laughs> uh, so you import it into your IDE like you would any coding library. Your, your company's best practices can be part of that library. You go have more simplified um, Kubernetes abstractions. And then once you're done writing code in whatever language you want, you run the synth command, and it synthesizes the CDK's code into plain vanilla Kubernetes YAML that you can apply to any cluster. And those are the choices. If my clicker, da -da -da -da! vote please. What do you want to see? CDK's, oh, Helm, come on. Do you really need some Helm demoed? <laughs> let's let's be for serious Helm. for a second. <laughs> Awesome, I think we have a pretty clear winner. What Is do you it think? CD Kates? CD Ooh. Kates. Now, Let's do uh, it. We're going back to the Ingress demo. Let me see whether uh, I got the IP. Yes, I got the Woo! IP. Uh, I got too many IPs. <laughs> so I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep only one of those. That's enough for me. Uh, and uh, I'm going to export uh, uh, no, what did I? Ah uh, yeah, ingress. 
because I cannot remember, class name uh, is going to be contour, contour, that's the one, yes. And I'm going to store uh, domain uh, for later. It's going to be ingress uh, ip.nip.io. That's what I will do. Now, the best, the easiest way at this stage to demonstrate ingress is to open a web UI of a GitHub tool that you chose. Yeah. Flux. Yeah. Well, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you chose wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> We're skipping that, exactly. No, no, I mean, you chose right. I mean, you do, who needs browsers? You do everything from a terminal. What did they choose for the, 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 the last one? What was it? CDKs? CDKs, CDKs. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay, let's do CDKs. How much time we have? Four okay. minutes. It's not going to happen, but let's try. Uh, Flux. Uh, CNCF, I, I did prepare some, some things, CDKs, there we go, I have a file here. Uh, it's going to go to YAML prod, right? Uh, we, we can, I cannot instruct uh, Flux to use CDKs, but what I can do with CDKs, output YAML, right? So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to copy that file, pa, 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 and I'm going to paste it to the apps directory, that's where I keep my application, CNCF demo, uh, dot YAML. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, I need more, actually. Let's go to CDKs. There we go. Uh, I, in my code, I'm using uh, some environment variables to decide whether something is uh, production or something else. Environment is going to be prod, prod, not project. Okay. Uh, what else should I do? Uh, yes, uh, I need to change a few things. You see that I plug this. <laughs> uh, not the first time I'm doing this. <laughs> Image dot tag. Um, is going to be uh, whatever is the tag of my image. It happened before, uh, and uh, app.prod, there we go. I'm going to put the tag of the image that I want to deploy. You will see the code later. Uh, and what else do I need to do? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, ingress uh, host is going to be, uh, there we are. Uh, what did I use? The ingress uh, domain, right? Oh, fuck, what's going on here? <laughs> okay, uh, again, uh, YQ in place uh, ingress uh, host equals tap that tap, and uh, CNC, no, 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 CNCF demo dot ingress, no, 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 ingress, domain. Right, that's what I used, and close it, and the file is up prod, okay. I think it's you have happening. two closing. What? what? That's right, that's right, that's right. You're good. Are you sabotaging? Sorry. <laughs> but she finished her part. She's finished, she's finished. She can go home now. Okay, uh, what else? Yes, uh, the last thing. Uh, da, 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 ingress, 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 class name. We need to say contour, right? Class name equals uh, top uh, contour. Is that how you write it? Yes, okay, up prod, prod, there we go. Okay, now it should work, and I can demonstrate that. CDKs, uh, synth, that's a command to, to convert uh, code into YAML. I'm using Go today, um, and I want to output it to YAML, YAML, prod, there we go. That's what I want, I want to validate, uh, whether it works well. Uh, it should output my Go code, which I might not have time to show you, into YAML. Synthetizing application. Uh, all the warnings are always ignored unless they are errors. <laughs> um, and if I go back, ta ta ta, and if I output YAML, uh, YAML prod, uh, what is CNCF demo, that's the YAML of my application. Uh, from the Go code, the no time for anything. Git add, git commit something, uh, git push, there we go. And now if I say kubectl namespace, production, production, get all, there is nothing, right? Because it takes a bit of time until Flux figures out. Uh, <laughs> one minute. That's how much it takes. Huh? Yeah, okay, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Uh, cut the uh, CDKs. Uh, there is uh, multiple files, let's say main Go, right? Uh, here's the Go code. Ooh. 
And uh, wait, 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 you won't even go code, there's more go code. The key is more. <laughs> it is. Want more go code? <laughs> or you're fine. <laughs> uh, wait, depending, if it works, then no more, okay, more go code. <laughs> uh, here's a database. Yeah. You need to have a leap of trust that eventually <laughs> it will work. I think that they will kick us out, no? We're good. Nobody leaves. <laughs> Until this works, nobody leaves. <laughs> so we have, we're presenting at KubeCon on Wednesday afternoon, I think around 3.15 or something. Um, so we're going to do this choose your own adventure style talk with the voting, but it's around security tools that we've been covering in our, in our stream. So we'll have four security system design choices for that. Yes. And we're live streaming the finale of our You Choose at the Tanzu booth on Friday morning. So come hang out with us during KubeCon. Yeah. It yeah. will work eventually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm giving three books of Crossplane. Can, to one person who voted for Crossplane. <laughs> Can we show them the QR code if they want to get to the CNCF repo? Or is it too late? Oh, yeah, no, 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 there we go. Uh, there's the QR code. Oh, no, yep. too late. Yeah, unplugged it. OK, uh, never mind. We have a, 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 a repo of all the projects we've integrated with all the other projects. Basically, if you go to repo, you can choose any path you want, and you will get commands for any combination that you can imagine of any tool that you, you ever saw in your life. So good <laughs> luck finding it. <laughs>